one of the biggest questions I get asked is, how do I make the jump from my tiny backyard pit to a monster offset smoker? Today, we're gonna go over some experiments and show you just how to do that. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Kevin, and today we're gonna be playing with this Meadow Creek 250 gallon smoker. All right, so this is obviously just a monster of a smoker. And a lot of people, they're not sure what it takes to run a smoker like this. So we're gonna go over a couple things real quick. One is getting that firebox up the proper way because you're gonna see it's not something you can just dump charcoal into. You want a wood fire for this type of smoker. Uh, some people do do it with charcoal, but for this, I like wood only and it takes a lot of wood to get a nice base of charcoal. So we're gonna go over that. The second thing we're gonna go over is my friend says this thermometer is toast, so it always gives him a wrong reading, but he knows it runs hot. So I'm preparing for a pig cook, a whole hog, and I wanna know exactly what my temperatures are just to see and get a gauge of how hot this thing really runs. So I, I prepare better for how much time that pig is probably gonna take me to cook tomorrow. Let's get right to it. All right, one of the first things you wanna do is open up your smoker and give it a good inspection. Anytime a friend lets you borrow their smoker, um, you should return the favor and clean out the smoker. Uh, this was full from a lot of cooks, so I took the time to repay my friend and say a big thank you by cleaning up, getting the dry vac out, and getting up all the scrapes. Uh, there was a lot to it, but well worth it for having a friend that will let you use their awesome equipment like this. So always be thankful for good friendships like that. Uh, the other thing too, here's the firebox. All right, so it's completely different from the firebox you're used to seeing me use. I've already taken out all the ash out of this bottom tray here. And since this isn't a formal cook off uh, yet, and it's just a test run, I'm gonna load this up with wood. I'm not too worried about cleaning out the inside there because we're gonna burn that out too. Uh, but you can see this is the firebox. It's insulated, so it provides a lot of pack or a lot of punch, I should say. And I'm gonna stack the wood up here. Let me get right to that and show you how that's done. You can see there's no overhead area where you can drop in charcoal. So it'd be really hard if you were a charcoal cooker to add charcoal into this pit. That's why using wood is so important. The other thing I wanna mention real quick is this heat box here. You can use it for heating up, you know, mac and cheese, keeping food hot. But the other thing you wanna do is add some wood that's a little wet in here because that should help get it ready when you add it to your hot charcoal base. All right, let's get this fire going. All right, as you can see, we're trying to put the bottom logs, the bottom splits that direction so that the airflow can go through there. And then we're going to crisscross the top so that we keep making area for the wood to climb. All right, and the reason we wanna do this is wood climb, uh, fire climbs up. You wanna keep just stacking it up so the fire has a place to climb and all this stuff burned down really good so you have a nice bed of embers.
Now, what I'm looking for here is number one, how long did it take me with the blowtorch to get this going this well? And that was a five, five minutes with the torch to get this really hot and going, the flames working for you. Uh, the other thing I wanna know is how long is this gonna take to burn down to hot embers? Cause there's a lot of bad smoke being pushed off of this. And I wanna get to that cleaner smoke. So I'm gonna time how long I'm going to time this whole process uh, because I wanna know when I start this thing, if I wanna throw my pig on at three o'clock in the morning, if this takes two hours, I wanna know that this is gonna take two hours to get that bed of embers, get, get a really clean burning smoke. Uh, one of the things that always plagues me is I never start my fire early enough. I don't give myself enough time. And then I feel like I'm always rushing so I want to know, is this going to take a full two hours? We're 25 minutes in since we lit up the propane torch. Uh, it's looking like it's going pretty good, but I've fallen into the trap for years of starting this too late. And then I feel like I'm rushing the entire time. Let's take a look around at the way I've set this up. I got full vents open on both sides. I have my equipment set up to run the test, but I also leave the door, the lid open, just because as you were seeing earlier, there was a lot of bad smoke coming out of there. There's no reason to have that going through my chamber. Uh, right now, all the smoke is going out of the firebox, but once I shut down my firebox, you can see that smoke, uh, it's hard to see, but it's barely coming through. But it's gonna be a huge smoke chamber here as soon as we get the wood to the right level. The other thing is I do have the vent completely wide open while we're getting everything lit, super hot. Uh, we want all those things wide open, uh, just so you, you can reference that. It's the way we do it. Other people probably do it a different way, but uh, we've cooked a ton of pigs on this and this is the process for us. One other thing I wanna note, this is a reverse flow smoker. So traditionally, there's the firebox the smoke would come up right here and come over and exit out there. But the vent, as you can see, is back up over here. So what happens is there's a huge piece of metal running under here and the smoke flows under there and then pops up here and comes back over the meat more evenly. The thing why you need to pay attention to that is I wanna see what this temperature read versus this is. Because if I have a pig on here and the head is up here and the feet are back there, well, at some point in the cook, if this is running you know, 15, 20 degrees hotter than this side, you're gonna to have to flip it. And we have had to flip our pigs in the past. Uh, so these are the things you wanna be taking note of. These are the things you wanna be paying attention to just to have a more efficient smoke. All right, so total time before I added another log was about an hour and 15 minutes. Now one thing, one of the reasons I do YouTube is so I can watch my videos as a reference point, as notes. What I'd like to do tonight is if I'm shooting to get the pig on around one o'clock, I wanna start this around 11.30, all right, to make sure I have a good base of charcoal. However, at the 45 minute mark, I'm gonna to wanna to shut down this portion of it because there was so much airflow that it cooked down the embers more than I wanted it to. Now it's important to understand and take these notes. Like I said, that's part of YouTube for me. But one of the things I did was create a journal, all right? And this is something where I would put in preparation notes that I want to shut down my firebox door at the 45 minute mark. The journal here, I left lots of room for you to take notes. And the reason you wanna do this is I'm creating videos so I can turn around and go back to the notes. How are you gonna remember if you only cook a pig once a year, once every two years? You wanna create your own recipe book, your own barbecue journal that works for you. Things you learn, things that didn't work, and this becomes your recipe book. This is something I look forward to passing down to my children and even potentially my grandchildren so that they can get started off on the right foot, learn from my mistakes, and get to that next level even faster. So check it out, it's in the description below.
All right, so currently when I had all the vents open, the door open, this side here, this side up front was 375. All right, that's super hot. And back here was 315. All right, now for starters, I thought it would be hotter over here because of the airflow coming and coming over. Uh, but right away, the firebox and the vent being over here is creating this is the hot spot okay confirming for our cook later today into tomorrow morning we're going to have to rotate the pig at some point during the cook because the one side is just super hot now when i closed down the vents to where it was only closed all the way and then a crack on the one side the temperatures are getting closer together so we're at about 350 here and 300 uh, still a huge variance, but it's something we can still work with. It's something you want to know. I'm going to shut this lid, close it down, and we're going to go 30 minutes to see what the temperature is after 30 minutes. <whistles> 30 minutes later, we're at 263 and 292. On... 263 over here, 292 over here. There is nice smoke coming from the fire, uh, not too white and billowy. Normally I have this shut, but because I want ease of access for the video, I cracked it just right before I filmed this. All right, now here's a problem. It's giving me the right temperature I want, but my base is not nearly good enough. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two logs to try to reform my base. It's super hot in there. But keeping the doors cracked, now I'm fighting. Sorry, I gotta back up there. The, the heat is killing me. Uh, there's plenty of heat pumping from here. However, this is gonna be a problem because there's just not enough charcoal base. So I need to add two logs to replenish my charcoal base and then monitor the temperatures to make sure with my vents closed the door cracked and just a small little crack on one vent that i'm getting enough airflow and not too much bad smoke so this is something i'm really happy i'm not doing at three o'clock in the morning and preparing for ahead of time it's been about 30 minutes later actually closer to 40 minutes later as you can see the woods really ripping there's so much heat coming off of there even with the door shut and the vent cracked on the side uh, so let's see what our temperature read is all right we're right at 400 up front and 345 in the back uh, as my friend said this thing runs hot which is great for pigs but now i'm starting to think if I'm serving dinner at five o'clock at night, I might not need to get this started till five in the morning because it should cook in about eight to 10 hours. So that should get me plenty of time to get this pig done. So if I start any earlier with it running this hot, now I'm not gonna try to run it this hot. I'm gonna go back to one log and just instead of waiting a full hour before adding a log, I'm probably gonna add it 45 minutes every 45 minute increments to keep this going. Uh, but as you can tell, two logs in there is just running way too hot. So my game plan is to get this thing started at you know 3.30 in the morning, get the pig going at five o'clock and just cook it, cook it from there. Like I said, this isn't a smoke at this point. This is just running way too hot, but trust me, there's gonna be plenty of smoke flavor on this pig and it's still gonna turn out delicious. That was a good practice run. Did it run hotter than I wanted it to? Absolutely. Uh, what does that tell me? What notes am I taking away from this practice run is I wanna make sure I'm adding wood at the right interval to replenish that charcoal base so even though this is a beast of a smoker, I still need to be adding wood every 45 minutes, but just one log. Because when you add two logs, all of a sudden, this thing is getting ripping hot. Now, like we've said, we've cooked a lot of 
pigs on this before. So I know they turn out delicious, even though they are running hotter than a traditional smoker might do at 250 to 275. We only do this a few times a year. If we really wanted to play around with the firebox and get those temperatures down even more, we could. But this has been tried and true to give us great results. So we're gonna keep with it, even running it hot. Now we know that the temperature right now is up front 372, in the back 325, and up here it says 355, 365. So this temperature gauge, even though it is off, it's not off by that much. So it was good to run this experiment to figure all this out. I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment and it shows you don't be intimidated by moving up to the next level smokers. All right, this is something you can do uh, even though we have, I haven't dialed this in perfect. Uh, this is a great smoker where my buddy doesn't do any of this high tech stuff. He just gets a fire going and once every half an hour to an hour, he comes by and throws a piece of wood in there and then walks away. I'm neurotic, so I, I like to know exactly what's going on with the smoker. But overall, this thing produces great quality food. As always, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and check out ComparisonCooking.com to get all the latest. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I will see you soon.